What's up guys, Adam here with Indy Farm Life. Back working on the grasshopper again today. I'm gonna work on replacing all the spindles and the blades up front. There's nothing wrong with this machine. These are just wearable items and this thing is 22 years old. Before we jump into the repair, there are really two ways you can tell if you need to replace your spindles. One is when your bearings sound like they've been replaced with gravel every time you mow. Two would be if there's a little bit of wobble in the blade across the top of the spindle. Jack flipped up here. Here's what I was talking about with the wobble. I think two out of three of these are bad. I think that's the good one. So you can see when I push here, there's not really movement. There's a little bit. Of one. one of these is really bad. This one's pretty bad here. You hear that? See how the bolt for the blade is definitely tight. So that's wobble in the spindle. You can see the whole the whole spindle there moving. That's how you know. Too. So those two are definitely bad. The third one, minor play, but we're gonna replace them all. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the blades off here, clean up the deck a little bit, and then pull and put the deck back down because these bolt in from the top. out of here it's just lifts off of here uh i did not buy oem yeah isn't that cool i did not buy oem spindles i bought oem spec spindles uh but they're like half the price and they had pretty good reviews on amazon so those will be linked below along with the blades which i did buy from grasshopper but the three spindles that have to come off are right here one under this cover and this covers little poppy's covers off and we got to pop these pulleys off, which I may have to borrow my neighbor's gear puller for. And from there, we should be able to take the bolts out and put the new ones in. It's they yucky did it in there. on your own when you were driving. I wasn't driving it. You were driving it. Mm -mm. You. Me? This is your grasshopper, not mine. Note to future self, don't step right there. You can see with the top of the spindle. When the blades were on, I must put pressure on it. Look. The... See that right there? Top of that spindle, or the pulley rubbed right there on that. Oh. Yeah, not good, huh? I've never done this before, so I'm kind of just going with the flow. You get the belt tension off. I'm kind of hungry a little. You're kind of hungry a little, huh? Sometimes you get hungry sometimes. And your tummy starts humming for food. Starts humming for food? Yeah. You're screaming? What's this? We get the spring off of here. Daddy, what? I'm going to save your spot again so nobody takes it. Okay. Because you don't want people to take your things. That would be bad. You'll be, be sad. Bad. There we go. How's that? Let's get a picture. All right. Get a picture of that. You know why I took a picture of that, Otto? Yeah. Be careful. It'll fall off that backwards so that I know how it goes back on that later. All right. Can I have my seat back, please? Yep. You can get in yours. All right. What should we do next? Because we all have our own. I think we'll start with the center spindle. It's Daddy, right here how do the bottom lights turn on? Uh, there's a switch by the key up there, but the key has to be on for it to work. But for um the top ones, it doesn't need to be turned on. Nope. You just turn it on. on. So I'm gonna do that so you have some some light. Yeah, that's helpful. To see. That does kind of help. Thanks, Dad. It does kind of help you see sometimes. Sure is. And he'll, we'll just say. What's this all about? Cool. We'll just say to. I guess I gotta take this off here, Otto. I don't know why, but it's like. Where are my pliers? Don't know. They should work. There's right there. Right there. It might because. We don't know yet, because we weren't the one that built this. What is this? You know what this thing is? No. What kind of mower is this? John Deere, right? Yeah, but it doesn't it's have green. It's not John Deere. The grass? Hopper. Yeah. Saving it, saving it, saving it. Do you want me to follow you around? 
Why do you follow me around? Because I love you! I love you too, buddy. That warms your heart, doesn't it? There's one bolt on top of all those pulleys. Now I'm gonna try to pop them off there. I saw that I pulled the spring to relieve tension, and I took a picture of the belt. The manual has it, I'm sure, but it's a whole lot easier to reference a picture I take than come back and... You just have to let the, the spring... Just do it. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Don't I look like... Me, mommy, mommy, mommy. Me, mommy, mommy, mommy. We'll see. Just gotta get a little pressure on here and walk this up. wasn't so bad. Just use a little leverage and kind of prop it off there. A little oil helped. Uh, so I'll pop the R2 off real quick and we'll start undoing the spindles. come off though doesn't it so when will it pop? I don't know new pulley it is this thing's already toast never in my wildest how no. is that thing not coming off there now if this pulley's damaged we might just get the back of it and rip it off here what do you think maybe I'm not sure that's even possible sure I don't know what's going on with this thing, but that pulley is completely wrecked now. And this thing is not even close to coming off here. It didn't even move. All right, so I've utterly destroyed this pulley. And now knowing how this goes together, maybe I can save you guys some headache from destroying said pulley. If I was doing this again, I wouldn't probably use the gear puller. I ended up putting so much pressure pulling up on there. I destroyed the lip on this sheave. So I gotta buy a new sheave, which whatever, it's fine, it's like 40 bucks. Um, if you're in a situation and you can't get this pulley up off, uh, I don't know if you can see right here in the middle. Let me grab the other spindle. Here's one of the new nice shiny spindles. Uh, here's the bolt we took off on top. I'm not going to take it off all the way, but you'll notice that you can see the, the piece here in the middle that we screwed into. It actually drops down. So you can see right here the one that used to be up where I was putting that top bolt. It's falling all the way through. So really you can just drive this down. So instead of using a gear puller, I honestly would advise a sledgehammer, and this is where I should have started. Take the sledgehammer and just beat the top of that down through the bottom. Then you're not putting any kind of pressure on your sheave. So had I known that, I may have saved myself from having to buy a new sheave, but here we are. If that doesn't make sense, it'll make more sense when I put this back together, but you can kind of see how that wants to fall through there. So now... We just gotta finish knocking this one through. I mean, it's it seems pretty good. But it doesn't matter if you destroy the head of this, because that's getting fully replaced. You live and you learn. And then and then what? You hammer it down. Yeah. You need more power, right? Well, it's off, and I found the little key I was looking for, just somehow buried way down in there, so that's good. Uh, but, replacing this was not in the original plans, so I got ordered order part, which means I will not be mowing grass today when this is done, because it won't be done. But Amazon has one for 40 bucks, and it'll be here tomorrow. I love Amazon. This will all be linked below. So if you happen to be working on your grasshopper, and you do this to your sheave, then, uh, yeah, there's a link below for that. All right, let's make some more progress. So we'll get that part ordered. Next we got to do is just drop the spindles themselves. So you can see there's bolts or nuts on the bolts here to take all those off. So we'll pop those off. 
You can kind of see there what it looks like in practice. So we'll drop those out now. I'm going to drop this last one over here. I might pull the mower out, leaf blow off some of this garbage, and then we will start popping the new ones back in. All right, so I got these three dropped off the mower. Before I put them back together, I want to show you um, a little nuance among these parts. These are not all the same part. The difference being that the left one, the spindle is taller. So you can see there how that part sticks out of the top of there versus this one, maybe. Get down there. You can see it's just a little bit taller. And so that one there goes on the far left, the middle, and then the center. Just take note the fact that these are not all the same part when you go to order these parts. Not bad for 22 years old, huh? Once you get it all cleaned up. All right, now literally all I got to do is put the other ones underneath, lift them up, and put the screws on. Um, I'll probably start there, work my way this way. I'll be able to get everything done. I'll put those two sheaves back on, off the weight on this one. But I will be able to flip it up and put the blades on it. So this should be mostly done today. All right, so actually I think I figured out what these things are for in a matter of, I don't know, 30 seconds. Uh, I think they're there to help you hold this up as you tighten those screws. Without it, it'd be really hard to get your hand all the way underneath and pull pressure up. So I think that's what that's for. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm off base, but it worked. And then it's noteworthy that there are grease zerks on each one of these, so you just gotta line the zerk up with the cutout. And probably a good idea to give it a few pumps of grease just to make sure that it is gonna take grease. Wouldn't hate to have to pull it later. So, all right, I'll pop the other two in now. All right, got all three of those on. All three zerks did take grease, so that's good. Uh, now I'm just gonna put these two sheaves back on here and there. Uh, gotta wait for that part to come in. Once that's done though, we'll go ahead and flip it up and then we will put the new blades on. And from there, it's really about done. So I got the one all buttoned up, looking good. Um, starting here in the center one. All I've done so far is take off this cap and, and the little lift plate, if you will. So from here, you just lay this right there on top like so. Line those up. You gotta put pressure on it from the bottom and then you stick this key in the groove between the sheave and the groove there on the side. And then this side over here has got an extra spacer that goes on top. I'll get to that in a moment. All right, so here's a better shot. You have to put some pressure from underneath to keep the uh, spindle from falling through. But now I got those lined up, this little key, just quarter inch by quarter inch key stock. Slides in there and that keeps the uh, sheave and the spindle all lined up. I need two hands to get this together, but you guys get it. Once these line up, this just goes down and then you put the cap screw on. We're going to need to now flip this up and put the blades on. So there are the new blades. These are actually the Grasshopper Extreme Lift. Uh, you got to have either 20, 30 horsepower air-cooled or liquid-cooled motor for these. Uh, it's pretty substantial blades, and I don't know if the old ones were not OEM or just they've changed the design over the years, but significantly heavier duty. Should have better discharge. And then I tell you, under here it looks nice. Uh, this one here, you can st it'll still float right now because I don't have that top locked in. So I'll do that off camera and get all three of those on, give you guys a shot of that. Then we'll be waiting on that last sheave there. Uh, but I, before I wrap the video up though, I do wanna run this again and see if you guys can hear the difference and give you my initial reactions about how much better it operates. So I got all my new blades on here. I was a little nervous because I have a few deflections in my mower deck here, but I still have enough clearance. Might have to get a hammer though and beat that one out because it's a little close for comfort. Uh, but now I just gotta wait on that sheave on that side and we will be set. The wobble, as you can see in here, is now gone. So definitely need to be replaced. So here's the new sheave, got that. I'm gonna drop this in on top of this spindle here. Uh, again, the sheave goes on first, then this spacer and the washer and bolt. So I'm gonna get that on there. I won't show this again. I'm just gonna get this all buttoned up, put the belt back in place, and then we're gonna take this thing out and see how well it performs. All right, she's all buttoned up. I'm gonna give her a little test flight. Let her rip, tater chip.
smooth again and it sounds like a Boeing 747. So I'd say I fixed it. I'll give you guys a couple passes mowing this pasture. It's about 14 inches tall. It's been about four weeks since I've mowed. And then we'll call this a video. camera picks it up but that grass is insanely long right now pretty decent cut just want to kind of take it slow and see how it performed if you guys don't have a grasshopper and you're in the market for a lawnmower check out grasshopper especially the front mount decks i have another video out there floating around about why the front mount deck is so awesome multiple reasons mainly a cooler of beer fits out there really nice but yeah check them out new used they're all over um this one's 22 years old so built like tanks I hope that was helpful for some of you guys out there who might be in a similar situation, needing to replace some spindles on your mower. Should be a very similar process on any other brand of zero turn. You just may not have the access on the front end like I did with this front mount grasshopper. So if you guys would, hit that subscribe button, come back and see me, and I'm going to go mow this and maybe go get a round baler. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.